Okay, in this video we're going to look at a solution to problem A1 from the 2014 Putnam exam. So let's look at the statement of the problem. We want to prove that every non-zero coefficient in the Taylor expansion of 1 minus x plus x squared times e to the x based at x equals 0, also known as the Maclaurin series, is a rational number whose numerator, when taken in lowest terms, is 1 or a prime. So this is a fairly simple problem once you um, expand it out in terms of the Taylor series of e to the x, and let's see uh, how to do that. So we'll take 1 minus x plus x squared times e to the x, and we'll write that as 1 minus x plus x squared times the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial times x to the n. So that's the Taylor series for e to the x. Now the next thing we'll do is we'll take all of these terms and distribute them into uh, the series and break that apart into two series. So let's see what we get there. So we'll get the sum, sorry, three series. So we'll get the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial x to the n minus the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial x to the n plus 1. And then finally, plus the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial x to the n plus 2. Good. And now notice, this term starts at constant terms. So if we plug in n equals 0, we get just 1. This term starts at x to the first power type terms. So if we plug in n equals 0, we'll get x. And then that term over there starts at um, x squared type terms. So if we plug in n equals 0, we get x squared. And so what we want to do is extract terms from this first sum and the second sum so that they both start at um, x squared type terms. So that means we need to extract two terms from this first sum. So we're going to extract 1 plus x plus the sum n equals 0 to infinity of, sorry, now it's the sum from 2 to infinity of 1 over n factorial x to the n. So I didn't re-index or anything yet. That's my next step. But I did take out the first two terms. Now we're going to take out the first term of the next one, x minus the sum n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n factorial x to the n plus 1. Okay, great. And now the last one is unchanged because it has the strictest condition that we're trying to match. Good. Now the next thing we want to do is re-index these three sums so that they all have uh, the same power of x. And let's re-index them all into the x to the n power, which means here in this one we're going to replace n with n minus 1, and in this one we're going to place n with n minus 2. So that's what we'll do in the next step, and we'll also notice that these two terms cancel each other. Good. So that's going to give us 1 plus, so now we have the sum n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n factorial. But now I'll, uh, well actually let's write this all out. So x to the n minus the sum n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over, so this is going to be um, n minus 1 factorial x to the n, and now we have plus the sum n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n minus 2 factorial x to the n. Okay, fantastic. So now uh, putting all those together, we get the following. So this is equal to 1 plus the sum n equals 2 to infinity of, so I'll let you guys combine this 1 over n factorial minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial plus 1 over um, n minus 2 factorial, and you'll see that you get n minus 1 over n times n minus 2 factorial x to the n. So that's what we get from all this simplification. So now what I'll do is I'll clean this up, I'll bring this term up to the top, and then we'll move on to the rest of the problem.
Okay, so on the last board, we calculated the following formula for the Taylor expansion of 1 minus x plus x squared times e to the x. We get 1 plus the sum starting at 2 to infinity of n minus 1 over n times n minus 2 factorial and then times x to the n. So before we get to the, the rest of this solution, let's just explore a little bit with the numbers to give some motivation for what we're about to do. So let's make a chart n and then n minus 1 over n times n minus 2 factorial just to see that indeed when we do the simplification we get a 1 in the numerator or a prime in the numerator. Okay, so let's take this n equals 2 is the first one. So notice we're going to have a 1 in the numerator and then a 2 times 0 factorial, which is 1 in the denominator. So we have half. Good. And now if we have 3, that's going to give us 2 over 3 times 1 factorial. So that's, again, 2 is in the numerator and that's a prime. Okay, now for 4, so we have 3 in the numerator, and then we're going to have 4 times, let's see, 4 minus 2 factorial, so that's 2, so this simplifies to 3 over 8, so check it out, we've got a prime in the numerator, let's look at uh, 5, so that's going to give us 4 in the numerator, and then let's see, we have 5 times 3 factorial in the denominator, and so 3 factorial is the same thing as 6, which can cancel to a 3 if we cancel this thing in the numerator with a 2. So that gives us 2 over 15 in the end. But now notice we have a prime in the numerator. So um, just from this brief chart, we see that the structure is making sense. So now uh, let's look at the rest of the argument. So this argument is going to run in a couple of cases. So case number one is if n minus 1 is prime. Okay. So if n minus 1 is prime, then uh, notice we can make the following observation that uh, n minus 1 is relatively prime to n minus 2 factorial. That's clear because it doesn't have any factors apart from itself and 1, and it's relatively prime to n. And that's easy to show because consecutive numbers are relatively prime. And so even though n isn't smaller than n minus 1, we know it's consecutive to n minus 1, so it's relatively prime. Um, but that means the lowest terms of this fraction is exactly n minus 1 over n times n minus 2 factorial. There's actually nothing to do there. There's no simplification that can happen. Okay, now uh, let's look at case number 2, and that is n minus 1 equals p squared, where p is a prime. Great. But now in that case, notice that uh, p occurs in n minus 2 factorial. So that's pretty easy to see because notice p squared um, is... So n minus 1 being p squared means that p is going to be smaller than or equal to n minus 2. That's pretty obvious. Um, so p occurs in, in uh, n minus 2 factorial, but that means in lowest terms, the numerator is 1 or p. So the thing is, um, we don't really care how much more it cancels. We know at least one of these copies of P does cancel, but we don't know if the other copy of P cancels. It actually does. You can show that with a little bit more work, but we don't need to because what we want to show is that the numerator cancels down to one or a prime, and we know that, that those are the only two possibilities, that it cancels down to one or a prime. Okay, so I'll clean up this bit of the board, and then we'll look at the final case of this problem. Okay, so now we're ready to finish this off. So case number three is n minus one equals a times b, where a is not equal to b. So it is not a 
square of a prime, in other words. But this case is actually the easiest, because in this case, A and B both occur in, um, in minus 2 factorial. And what I should say here is that neither of these are equal to 1. So that's important in this case. And so A and B both occur in um, N minus 2 factorial, but in that case, the numerator is going to cancel all the way down to 1 because both of those will cancel in this N minus 2 factorial bit. Okay, so that's the end of the solution to this problem.